Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Story number one. The humans produce what? Written by Christian Zoom. I can't believe what I'm hearing. As the head of this training grounds of the Kazazakan military, I have seen lots of braces try and uh, mostly fail to complete our full course. It's designed to make any race go up to their limits, and it always has. We do this by scanning their bodies and running tests to see their capabilities, then configuring the course to be just a bit above their limits. We do not want people dying, like the Gurgans trials just created in a fever dream. What a disaster. A couple of weeks ago, a new race joined our training grounds due to the kingdom and the now universe controlled by the Senate of Hermans. Or was it humans? I also heard they're officially referred to as Terrans. They look like a simple race, average in almost everything compared to most of the known races, physically and mentally as well. They aren't geniuses. They arrived and we did the test, but something was uh, wrong. No, that's not the word. Inaccurate would be a better word. You see, the human data didn't have a precise number. It had a range, a broad one. It's the first time this has happened in our training ground history. How do we adapt our training grounds? What a nightmare. Shortly, the scientists of the humans ask about the delays on their startup of the training, and we had to be honest because we didn't know what to do. Well, we have unforeseen difficulties here. Your data is uh, inaccurate. Inaccurate? What do you mean? Well, uh, you're the first race that didn't show a clear number on the data of the test. It's showing a range, and uh, a really big one. Uh, do you know what this means? Huh. That's, uh, let's check with my colleagues, said the human, and went to talk with a group of scientists, then to the soldiers. Short moments after, the scientist came back with some interesting questions. How do you collect this data? Chemical tests? Physical? Maybe something of your technology Then we don't know, he asked. Well, from our records... If I had to say something about that, it's yes, all of them. Oh, well, then it's probably because of the chemical test, the human said in a cheerful voice. Hmm? Why do you say that? Do you think that we did something wrong? No, 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 the human said in a scared tone. Then? We, uh, we produce a chemical called adrenaline when under stress. Something like fuel in the bloodstream. It's a chemical that our body makes in case of emergencies or, well, anger. It makes us faster, stronger, more agile, prevents pain to be felt, and overall is a last stand chemical. I was silent. Silent in shock. Faster. Stronger. What? Yeah, wacky stuff. <laughs> so, uh, that out of the way, uh, can my boys go in? They're quite stressed. Yeah, uh, sure, I said in a defeated tone. How would we be able to stop them if uh, they use their bodies, their uh, adrenaline? End of story. Story number two. Lost in Transmission, written by Adriel. The Oracle was a marvel of renewal engineering. It was the largest and most powerful ship in the fleet, equipped with a highly experimental vortex drive and, as of three cycles ago, missing. We, of course, have telemetry from before the incident. Everything seemed normal aside from a slight flutter in the engine core tech team's planet side blamed it on poor cryon flow or some techno babble nonsense but were confident that it would work itself out two minutes later the pride of the fleet vanished let me be specific with my terms here the ore rattle had every sensor known to renewal tracking it there was no debris no warp trail magnetic gravitational and thermal sensors read zero they had teams looking for time travel just in case the law of causality took a vacation that day it simply vanished without a trace. What we did have was an audio recording, but the data stream was badly corrupted by radiation from the vortex drive. Our best linguists and computer scientists could only recover a few seconds of speech. Head engineer of uh, should be fine. Uh, engineers, uh, wish me luck. Investigations began immediately, but ultimately went nowhere. No one appeared to be at fault. The leader of the fleet command was forced to resign for putting so many resources into a single vehicle. But this was more politics than anything. Life moved on. Lessons were ignored. 
the military began an even larger flagship as soon as the dust settled. It seemed like the mystery would never be solved. Until... Ractor was sitting in a popular human restaurant, awkwardly holding something called a meatball. The food was technically compatible with the physiology and delicious, assured the cook, but it felt weird to mix food and geometry. She set the culinary monstrosity down and returned to her datapad. The recording from the lost ship played over and over. Her antenna could just barely detect the message hidden beneath the static, but she couldn't make it out. The mystery of it all fascinated her, even though it was probably futile. She looked up from her pad to see a human looking down. Can't blame you for not liking the food. Uh, name's Jasper. My dad owns the place. He's a better storyteller than Cook. Anyway, um... I overheard that recording. Uh, what's an oracle? It turns out humans can instinctively decipher speech even when the audio recording is badly damaged. What the best and brightest renewal failed at for years, a single human managed in seconds. A few minutes later, Jasper had reconstructed the full message. This thing a recording? Uh, go. Cool. Um, this is the head engineer of a uh, rattle speaking. I may have released a small amount of nitrous oxide onto the bridge to knock out the crew. They'll be fine in a few hours. Anyway, this vortex engine is a piece of work. If my math is right, it should be capable of forming a micro wormhole and jumping halfway across the system. You are about to be really glad that you hired a human, or we get sent through a cosmic wood chipper and get scattered across subspace. Wish me luck. End of story. Story number three. Barfly, written by Weijin Warrior. One sentient's pleasure is another sentient's poison. I smiled as I read the warning over the bar again, satisfied that I had managed to read the interlingua correctly on the first attempt. A bit of hubris, perhaps, considering it was the simplest of the three scripts possible. The bartender extended a limb in greet as one of his eyes swiveled towards me. I didn't go to the bar before sitting down, though, since they did not stock what I drank. Another sentient's poison, indeed. A shadow fell across my table just as I reached into my satchel for my bottle. I looked up and stared straight at an eft, tentacles weaving nervously as one yellow eye looked at me. I returned the favor, noting the blue fringe on the mantle that signified that it was early in the female cycle. I nodded, avoiding a smile since the sight of teeth may be seen as predatory by a herbivore eft. Query, the creature stated, a soft beak not quite managing to click sound in the middle of the word. I treated it, her, I corrected myself, to a several second long gaze as I poured neat alcohol into my glass. The rest of the patrons grew silent, and I felt like I was on the stage. I kept my eyes on the alien as I tried to judge the general feel of the crowd. Some things you have to time just right, just as it, she, drew a breath to speak. I spoke up again. I won't let you share my drink. The alcohol will likely dissolve your digestive system and you'll expire in the most unpleasant way. Stay with the sugar and fruit juice, it's safer for you. A handsome blue blush spread across the eft's mantle. Anger? Relief? The group she had come in with were in a various shades of green. Good-natured enjoyment, if the hollow tape had been correct. I refocused on the eft in front of me, taking a sip of the homemade moonshine before I continued. I won't fight you. I might kill you, even if I hold back. And I'd rather not be subject to efty injustice. I suppressed a smile. There was no way I would be in any physical danger. I just couldn't afford another fine. Her blue color grew deeper still, bordering on purple. I raised my glass, as in salute. And I will not beg you. The rest of the bar grew even more quiet, casually speaking of, or even referring to. Such things were not uncommon, but, well, I was human. There are rumors, you know. You're the cutest eft I've seen all week, but... The purple blush flashed into a bright pink. If my memory didn't play tricks on me, that would be pleasure in the compliment or pride in an achievement, or possibly relief. The light in the bar wasn't quite good enough to tell the difference. I'm no Captain Kirk. I prefer ladies I won't have to bend down to kiss. The bar exploded in sound. Laughter of some species can be quite horrifying, but mostly it's loud. The eft was bright pink, 
The mantle puffed up in pride so much I wondered if she would rise into the air. I smiled inwardly as I took another sip. Query, she repeated, snap shop with self, sit at our table, stories. I pretended to hesitate. A group of F's were not inoffensive company, but... Compensation? The still pink F offered, one tentacle trusting out towards the laden table her group was seated at. I smiled, taking care not to show teeth, before putting my bottle back in my bag and standing up. Lead the way, I said. I'll be pleased to join you. After all, a free meal was a free meal, and I could expect a cut from the bartender, too. A live human telling tales would draw more patrons. Another few weeks, and I might have even enough to pay my fines and buy a ticket somewhere else. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the Tier 5 members, Marky, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnolds, Oakfield, Lord Asdrakal, and it's difficult to pronounce. Thank you very much.